today we are going to have a discussion on introduction to section productive health. So in this session, we'll look at the definition of sexual health, uh, reproductive health, and then uh, se uh, sexual productive uh, health and rights. And then we shall also dwell on uh, the historical perspectives of uh, reproductive health. All right, so um, for us to understand what reproductive health is, I think it's very important for us to first have health in general. So the health is defined by WHO as the state uh, of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So this is uh, the most commonly used definition. It organizes the fact that health is not only the absence of disease. So uh, going to the hospital and then the diagnosis is and not feeling well means that you're not healthy uh, even when there's no physical illness that is being uh, obtained. So uh, when it now comes to matters to do with reproductive health, we just say that um, it's a state of complete physical, uh, mental, and uh, social well-being and not uh, merely the absence of disease of infirmity in all matters relating to a productive health system and to its functional processes. So that is uh, a comprehensive definition of uh, reproductive health. So it is in a way related to the definition that we have on, uh, on health. So sexual health, on the other hand, is also uh, having dimensions to do with the physical, emotional, mental, and social well-being in matters related to sexuality. Uh, sexuality as a term is one that actually explains a person's identity in relation to gender. So this sexuality is used typically to relate what one gets attracted to or basically what we term as uh, sexual orientation. Optimal sexual health therefore actually uh, relates to having a positive and respectful approach to sexuality. So that means that uh, sexual relations that are, uh, that one is involved in should be those that are positive and respectful. That means that uh, an individual's rights uh, are very respected and also that uh, the relationship is, is thriving, that there is mutual positive impact because of the sexual relations that one is having. And therefore also, the sexual yeah, interactions or sexual contact or um, sexual activities associated with sexuality should be pleasurable and like this, basically that uh, there should be enjoyment for these acts. And it should therefore not be forced, uh, no use of violence and also non discriminating. So, why is um, productive health very important? Is actually very important because we have a lot of reproductive health uh, issues that affect populations. Uh, we have issues to do with uh, HIV pandemic. We have issues to do with uh, STIs. We have issues to do with forced uh, marriages. We have issues to do with uh, female genital mutilation. We have issues to do with uh, HIV stroke AIDS. A lot of things. So the um, reproductive health actually plays a very, very important role in ensuring that all these problems are tackled. So it helps in educating people about matters related to reproductive health and then creating interventions that uh, create awareness uh, to adolescents about the issues related to sexuality and sexual activity and practices. And then also, uh, it's very important in preventing. Uh, sexually transmitted infections in and STIA and, uh, and HIV. And then we also look at the fact that some mothers who are infected with some of these STIs may have to, um, chances of transmitting these infections to their young ones. And therefore, reproductive health interventions can help in prevent the transmission of infections from mothers to uh, babies. So we can say that uh, even mothers who are HIV positive, um, with proper care, they can still uh, give back to babies who are HIV negative. And then uh, issues to do with uh, 
uh, infertility issues to do with early marriages, uh, contraception, uh, postnatal care. All these are important components of productive health, and therefore, uh, reproductive health practitioners should be in position to give them design interventions that target any of these. So, reproductive health, in general, it it, it is a, a significant component of health. Um, we cannot talk about general health without talking about productive health. And there it directly affects an individual's quality of life. And it is very important that countries actually invest a lot in productive health. So what is the history of productive health? It is quite not very easy to, to explain the, the sequence of events that resulted into um, reproductive health being one of the key issues that are being discussed um, at the global stage. So the, the history of productive health is quite wide and also very complex and keep very But what we need to understand is that um, reproductive health is basically influenced by a number of factors, uh, social, cultural, and also political factors. So our understanding of the dynamics uh, the, the dynamic interruption of all these factors and how they influence health is, is uh, and productive health specifically is uh, can also help us in understanding uh, history of productive health. In ancient times, practices on contraception were relying a lot on uh, apps and, and, and other uh, issues to do with animal intestines being, being used you know, to, to prevent conception. So, um, but as time went on, uh, with the development of science, um, the different uh, methods of contraception were introduced. So in the 19th century, that is when now there was an emergence of, um, of birth control methods, and this started in Europe and also uh, in the United States. And that is uh, the time when there was a lot of movement on ensuring that um, uh, contraception is uh, legalized and also accessible uh, to people who actually need it. And then in the 20th century, now back control became widespread and now new technologies started to emerge issues to do with the IUDs and the great trend but they are interested in data devices and then also uh, the bad control pills. Now this one caused a lot of shift in the, in the field of uh, reproductive health. And then in the 1960s, the movement was towards having comprehensive sexual health and sexual and productive health uh, services, including family planning uh, clinics being established and also more uh, contraceptive methods being produced. So the key players, of course, in productive health that we cannot skip talking about, uh, you have UN UNFPF, which was formed in 1960, who basically to deal with issues to do with production and then population issues. Uh, and then in 19, 1972, the WHO formed the research, uh, development and training in human production. Uh, uh, and which basically was to, to do more research on fertility issues. And then in the 1970s uh, and 80s, that is now when developing countries started to, to enact policies uh, on population. And so a lot of uh, NG, uh, UN agencies and other NGOs were supporting uh, the development of these policies. And, and then in the 1970s, now the movement was now towards ensuring that women have full control over their bodies and they therefore advocated for more access to reproductive health services and information. In the 1990s, that is when now a conference was held in Cairo, they want to hold the International Conference on Population and Development, ICPD. This focused on promoting reproductive health and rights, especially in developing countries. So the International Conference on the Productive Health, the International Conference on Population and Development was held in Cairo, Egypt in 1994. Um, the key issue, is, uh, the, 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 this actually marks one of the key events in, in the history of uh, 
and sexual productive health and rights because it highlighted the importance of productive health and, and also the importance of productive health rights. And it therefore advocated for increase in uh, access to comprehensive sexual uh, education and access to contraception. And also recognizes the need for that, you know, cultural and social factors played a role in affecting uh, productive health and therefore there was a need to address these factors. But if, if you put reproductive health at the center of the other global health movements, then we can also look at the primary health care declaration of, of 1978. This declaration also recognized maternal, maternal health as, family, as one of the key components of primary health care. And therefore, many health care systems are built on primary health care with the recognition that maternal health care services and family planning services should be accessible to all individuals, even at the community level, regardless of their social status, um, tribe, or any other characteristic. We, we earlier on talked about the fact that um, we had a lot of uh, uh, agencies advocating for uh, population control policies, or so policies that ensured that um, there was no population explosion. The belief was that if there was an uh, uncontrolled population growth, then there is going to be underdevelopment and also poverty. The NGOs, the UN agencies and other partners who are trying to make sure that developing countries have these policies uh, in place to make sure that uh, population uh, growth is controlled. These were the major reasons they were advancing. But if there is a population explosion, then underdevelopment is going to happen. Now. So people are going to remain poor. So uh, reproductive health is influenced by a number of factors. Uh, these factors, uh, we can call them uh, the social determinants of reproductive health. We can basically also look at them as uh, the social determinants of health in general. Um, so we can categorize these factors so in two four categories, individual factors. These are the, the factors that are acting on the individual level, uh, the, the gender, age, education, religious needs, nutrition, and environmental exposures. These are examples of individual factors that actually have uh, an impact on one's reproductive health. And then we have to move to uh, the local factors, uh, the social support or the family circumstance, uh, geographical factors, access to healthcare services, and also availability of these healthcare services. And then societal factors, the role of a woman, uh, that is the uh, issues to do with gender equality, uh, and so, um, traditional cultural practices, attitudes, uh, age of marriage, and age of initial, age at which someone has the first sexual. And then the political environment, which includes the economy, the legislation, and uh, the migration laws, and also peace and stability of issues to do with war. So these are factors that in one way or the other influence health, and we shall have a deeper discussion of this. Um, yes, moving to the challenges in productive health. We have a, we are experiencing a lot of challenges in relation to productive health. Uh, looking at South Sudan in general, the lack of peace uh, in the country contributes to a number of issues in productive health. The lack of peace means that uh, the hospitals are not going to be uh, well equipped, or those that are equipped, uh, the wars will result into destruction and looting of some of these reproductive health com commodities. The health workers will move away, and therefore there will be shortage of skilled health workers. Uh, even the training of people who are competent in productive health will be very limited. Um, and that means that uh, the chances that we shall have experienced uh, birth attendance in the different hospitals so, so health facilities is going to be limited because uh, of the insecurity. So 
we're going, we are going to have a lot of uh, maternal mortality resulting from the fact that there are very few uh, health professionals uh, to handle some of these maternal complications. Um, have child, uh, child. Uh, so we have very many complications. Uh, early child marriages, we have post marriages, we have a broken health system that is not very responsive. We have issues to do with uh, women uh, or gender inequality issues and many others. So thank you for listening to this presentation.